Number 32 is a line reference question. So it's only about the first passage, but it's about a large chunk of the first passage, right? The first paragraph, look at this, this is very long. So it's kind of intimidating. However, as always, we can use dumb summaries to keep things simple. What they're asking here is for the main purpose of his discussion of the growth of the territory and population of the United States. So we're gonna pay attention specifically to those ideas as we go through this paragraph, but we're looking for repetition because that's how writers write. They repeat the idea that is most important to them. So let's take a look. Let's focus on the repetition of what's going on. So this is what I see when I read this paragraph. Mr. Lincoln likens the bond of the federal constitution joining free and slave states together to a house divided against itself and says it is the contrary to the law of God and cannot stand. When did he learn, and by what authority does he proclaim that this government is contrary to the law of God? So, law of God seems to have come up twice already. Um, it cannot. It has stood thus divided into free and slave states. So, free and slave states, from its organization up to this day. During that period, we have increased from four millions to thirty millions of people. We have extended our territory from the Mississippi to the Pacific Ocean. We have acquired the Floridas and Texas and other territories sufficient to double our geographical extent. We have increased the population in wealth and in power beyond any example on earth. We have risen from a weak and feeble power to become the terror and admiration of the civilized world. And all this has been done under a constitution which Mr. Lincoln, in substance, says is in violation of the law of God and under a union divided into free and slave states, which Mr. Lincoln thinks, because of such division, cannot stand. Surely Mr. Lincoln is a wiser man than those who framed the government. So look at that. The whole middle part is very clearly about what the question is asking, right? The growth of the territory and population. So they just repeat that a bunch of times. We don't need to focus on the details. It, the fact is they've just repeated the main idea a bunch of times. And what's sandwiching that idea? Stuff about the free and slave states and the law of God and on both sides. So that's where my dumb summary is going to come in. It's probably about those ideas. Let's see what choices, the, what the choices look like. So provide context for Douglas's defense of continued expansion. Well, he talks a lot about expansion, but he doesn't say continue it. He's not talking about that at the beginning or at the end of this large chunk of text. So continued expansion doesn't seem to match with what I read suggests that the division into free and slave states does not endanger the Union. Yeah, he's talking about the free and slave states, and it's the law under God, and it's continued to stand, so that seems like it matches. Let's keep going. Imply that Lincoln is unaware of basic facts concerning the country. No, this is a stupid answer. The, the, the way that these kind of double passages work, they are almost never going to be like insulting each other and saying like, you know, oh, you're stupid for thinking this or uh, yeah, you're just, you're stupid. You don't know the facts. They're mostly going to acknowledge the other person's facts and then disagree with them. So that's a very different thing. This is not the case. It's not like Douglas is trying to be like, hey, remember when we conquered the Floridas? Like, no, Lincoln knows this. This, this is not common knowledge. This is not something that needs to be taught to Lincoln by Douglas. D, account for the image of the United States as powerful and admirable. Well, he does say that the United States is powerful and admirable, but this is kind of just saying what we already know. The question is asking, why did he say that the United States is now powerful and admirable? What was his purpose in doing that? His larger purpose was to say that we, we became powerful and admirable by, uh, with a constitution that divided us into free and slave states, and so that's okay. So look, you don't need to understand the nuances of Douglas's argument here. You just need to look for repeated ideas. Repeated ideas are main ideas. So he's repeating verbatim, word for word, free and slave states, division, love God. Those phrases appear at the beginning, before he goes on this rant about the growth of the country, and at the end after he's done that is a clear sign that that's what his purpose was. Stick to those kinds of things. Don't overthink it. Don't bring in your own knowledge of history. Go with what's written and trust that this kind of stuff is a road sign pointing you directly to the right answer. This is an easy question if you know how to handle the SAT reading.